Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if we can actually see photosynthesis happening in front of our very eyes. And I bring you this video as part of the world's largest YouTube collaboration called Team Trees. I'll tell you more about it at the end of the video and how you can help. Okay, so in order to try to see photosynthesis happening, what I'm going to use is spinach leaves here. Now normally leaves flow in water, but what I'm going to do is suck out the air that's in between the cells of these leaves and the air is going to come out and that's going to cause the spinach leaves to sink down. So I need small pieces of the leaf here. So I'm trying to get spots of the leaf that don't have veins in them. Okay, there's my leaf discs. Let's do a few more. And I'm going to put the spinach leaves in a sodium bicarbonate solution to, to provide them with CO2. And then I'm going to shine some light on the leaves. And hopefully what will happen is photosynthesis will occur. And when it occurs, it'll use that sodium bicarbonate. It'll use the CO2 in there as a carbon source. And it will use photosynthesis to create oxygen. And the oxygen bubbles will form in the leaf and it'll cause it to float again. So once the leaves begin to float, we'll know that photosynthesis is happening. Okay, now I want to vacuum it down enough so that it'll suck the air out, but I don't want to get too low of a vacuum because then the water will start to boil and I don't want to get cavitation or boiling inside of the leaves. Now the solution that I'm using is sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. You're just using an eighth a teaspoon for around 300 milliliters. And what that's doing is just making a solution that has a good amount of carbon dioxide in it. Okay, let's let the air back in and see if we got some air out, out of here. Oh, one's sinking. One sunk to the bottom. Oh, they're sinking. <laughs> There they go. <laughs> okay, look at that. We sucked the air right out of the leaves. They sunk to the bottom. Sorry, that gold leaf in there is from a previous experiment I did in here. Okay, now all our leaf pieces are sitting at the bottom of the water here. So what's gonna happen in photosynthesis Six molecules of carbon dioxide react with around six molecules of water and some light, and that creates a sugar molecule and six molecules of oxygen. So let's see if we can actually get this to happen and make our leaves float again. Okay, you can see them down at the bottom here. Let's see if they actually float. Whoa, one's starting to go up already. Look, <laughs> there it goes. That was fast. Oh, there goes another one. There it goes. Look at that. Oh, here goes another one. This is way faster than I thought. It's only been about a minute. Look at it rise up. That's so cool. Oh, there goes another one. <laughs> oh, there goes that one. Here goes another one. There they go, rising up. Now this is not from them heating up. I have this light on its lowest setting. It's not warm at all. There, this is just visible light. And most of it is passing through. It's not heating up this water at all. The other way you can confirm it's not heat causing them to rise is because they stay at the top once they're there. So they're rising up, going all the way to the top of this column and they don't come back down. 
you can actually see bubbles coming off of it. I don't know if those are just bubbles that were trapped on the bottom or that's actual oxygen coming off of it. That's pretty cool though. Oh, there go three together. <laughs> Another way that you can tell it's not heat is notice this white speck in there. The current of water isn't going upward. You can see that this is not going up right there. It's just staying in place, but the leaf is going up. So you can tell that the leaf is buoyant by itself, not due to some um, hot water uh, current going on inside. So it takes energy to turn carbon dioxide back into sugar and oxygen. The energy that the plant's using are light in this case. So it's clear with photosynthesis that during the daytime, plants can use sunlight and carbon dioxide to form sugar molecules and oxygen. But the question is, what happens at nighttime when the cells still need to use energy? What do they use when there's no longer light? Well, they just made a bunch of sugar molecules during the daytime, so they can actually break down those sugar molecules back into carbon dioxide during the nighttime. So now I'm gonna turn off the lights and see if these fall back down. So now they're gonna use the sugar molecules and the oxygen that they just made, and it's gonna do the reverse process basically, and they're gonna get energy from the sugar molecules that they just gained from the light. So basically they just stored the energy from the light in the sugar molecules so that they can use the sugar molecules later when they need it. Okay, one just started to sink right now. So it's actually using the sugar molecules and the oxygen. So it used up the oxygen inside the cell, so now it's sinking back down. This has been around five minutes after I turned off the light. So basically the plant made its own food, it made its own glucose, but then it used that glucose, it digested that glucose through something called cellular respiration. So what happens during cellular respiration is that glucose molecule is split into two smaller molecules called pyruvate. And during that process, it expels some ATP that can be used as an energy source. During this part, it doesn't use the oxygen that it had made, but later those pyruvate molecules make carbon dioxide, and during that process, it produces more ATP and it uses oxygen. So they're using the glucose and the oxygen that they had created to again make carbon dioxide and water. Now the carbon dioxide, it just dissolves back into the water so it doesn't stay in a gas form, so it's no longer a bubble, so that's why they sink. So basically we could just keep repeating this process. They sink back down, we shine some light on them, they make oxygen and glucose molecules and float to the top, and then once the light's gone, they're no longer making the oxygen, they're using it, and they're using the glucose molecules, and so it no longer makes them buoyant, and so they sink back down. So to do this at home, you actually don't need a vacuum chamber. You can actually just use a syringe. What you do is you just put your leaves in here, plug one end of it, and then pull it, and that creates a vacuum. And keep doing it several times. You can keep pulling the air out of them, and eventually they'll sink down in the water. And once they've sunk, now you're ready to shine some light on them and see if they float to the top again. So this was an awesome experiment about photosynthesis that's really easy to replicate at home. And this leads me to my next point. If you like photosynthesis, then you should love trees. Now Team Trees was started by Mr. Beast when the internet challenged him to plant 20 million trees. Now he tried his best, but he wasn't able to. That's a lot of trees. So the next best idea that he had was to collaborate with the whole YouTube community. So he challenged all the creators out there to make a video on this day and try to raise money to donate to the Arbor Day Foundation. And the Arbor Day Foundation agreed to plant one tree for every dollar donated to them. So basically what that means is the goal is to raise $20 million to plant 20 million trees. Now that's very doable. They estimate that around 750 million views will be generated as a result of this collaboration. So in order to donate, you can click the link in my description or there should be a button right below this video that you can click to donate. You can donate as much or as little as you would like. But remember that for every dollar donated, that means that an actual tree will be planted. Now this is a cause I think we can all get behind because who doesn't like trees? And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and remember to hit the bell if you haven't yet. 
and check out the actionlab.com and check out the link in my description to see the Amazon link for Extreme Garage Science, my new book where I use my favorite experiments from my channel and put it in book form. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.